Hi friends, it's Miss Bethany. It's so good to see you today. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I hope you've had a lovely day. Isn't it cold outside? I hope that it, when you went outside and played, you really bundled up because it is chilly. So I wanted to start today by showing you a few pictures. Are you ready? The first one is very beautiful. I'm gonna move my head over here. Okay, here's the first picture. Look, what do you see? Oh, it doesn't want to change. Let's try that again. Okay, here's the first picture. What do you see? Yeah, you're right. It's the ocean or the beach. Do you know what this brown stuff is called? You're right. That's called sand. Do you know what this is called? That's water. That's right. That's the ocean. The ocean is full of water, and the water goes on for miles and miles and miles. God made the ocean. Isn't it beautiful? All right, so that's one picture. Now I want you to think, how is that picture the same as this picture? Here's the next picture, are you ready? What do you see? It's more water. It's called a waterfall. And the water's coming, 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 and then it goes and it crashes down. And I think this is maybe a river. This is water too. These are two examples of water, and God made both of them. Okay, here's another picture. Are you ready? Okay, look closely. Here it is. That's water, too. Do you see it? That's water coming from a faucet. Look, I got my water that I'm drinking right here from a faucet like that in my kitchen. Maybe you have water like that in your kitchen or your bathroom and you use it for drinking or for washing your hands or for cooking if you help cook. So good. Okay, here's another one. Do you see the water there? What water is that? It's rain. It's raindrops falling from the sky. When rain comes down, it's water coming from clouds. Pretty cool. It's a good thing this... This kid here has an umbrella and a raincoat or else he would get all wet. All right, last one, are you ready? You ready for some more water? Here's one. That's just a little water bottle. That's right, you can drink it. These are all examples of water. And the reason why we're talking about water today is because friends, today I am going to teach you a Bible story in the book of Matthew, I already have my big Bible open to Matthew chapter 3. Today, we are going to talk about a Bible story when Jesus turns water into something different. It's very interesting. So let's go ahead and get started, okay? Can you see me okay? I'll put my face in the middle here. Okay. So like I said, we are going to learn a Bible story from the book of John. I think I said that wrong. From the book of John, chapter 2. And the first thing is, I'm going to pray for us. So show me what we do when we pray. We fold our hands, we bow our heads, we close our eyes. Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for each and every one of my friends here and for their mommies and daddies and their sisters and brothers. Help us to be really, really good listeners now and help us to learn more about you and help us to know just how much you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Okay, let's get started. So, like I said, today we are going to learn a story about when Jesus performed a miracle. He did something to show he was so strong. Okay? Let me tell you what happened. So one day, Jesus went to a wedding. Do you know what a wedding is? A wedding is a big party for a new family. It's when, when a boy and a girl grows up, they often start new families. So one man and one woman, they promise to love each other and to live together always. And they're so happy and their friends are happy and their family is happy. Well, friends, everyone comes to have a special time with this man and woman at the wedding. It's called a wedding. Can you say that word? Wedding. Very good. So Jesus went to a happy wedding. He went with his friends. And his mom was there. Everyone was having fun. 
The friends and family ate lots of yummy food and they drank lots of great drinks and everyone was having so much fun until something happened. Mary, Jesus' mommy, came to Jesus and said, we have nothing more to drink. All the wine is gone. You see, Mary knew that Jesus was the son of God and Mary believed that Jesus would take care of things. But Jesus said, woman, why do you tell me this? It is not time for me to do my special work of God. So Mary went to the workers at the wedding. Okay, let me show you what she did. Okay, can you see right here? So Mary went to the workers at the wedding. She told them, do whatever Jesus tells you to do. Nearby, there were six jugs. This is a jug. It can hold water. Okay, do you see it? They're really, really heavy. Like, pretend like you're picking something up that's so heavy. Ooh, yep, they're so heavy. I couldn't pick them up. You couldn't pick them up. The workers could barely even pick them up. And I, let's count them together because there were six of them. You ready to count them with me? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six jugs. And the jugs were so huge, but the jugs were completely empty. There was nothing inside. Jesus said to the workers, he said, fill those jugs with water. And they did it. They poured water into the jugs. They poured more and more and more water into these huge jugs. You see, these three are empty, but this one is full of water. And this one is full of water. And this one is getting water in it. So eventually, soon, they were all full of water. Then a miracle happened. You see, Jesus said, scoop some out and take it to the man who was in charge of the wedding. And do you want to see what happened? Oh, when they scooped it out, it wasn't water anymore. It was wine. Jesus turned the water into wine. I can't do that. You can't do that. Your mommies and your daddies can't do that. No one at the wedding could do that except for Jesus. Jesus did that. And guess what? The man in charge of the wedding, he liked the wine. It tasted very good. He thought it was the best wine of the whole wedding. Where did the wine come from? Jesus. You see, Jesus turned the water into wine. His friends knew that. They saw that Jesus was very powerful and they began to trust him and they saw Jesus's glory. And later they would understand that Jesus had glory because he was the son of God. So don't forget, Jesus and his mother and his friends, they went to a wedding. All the wine was gone. The workers did whatever Jesus told them to do he told them to put six wa put water into six jugs. The water turned into wine, and Jesus' friends saw his glory because Jesus is God. It was such a good story. It was the first miracle that Jesus did while he was here on earth. Friends, as a reminder, Jesus lived a perfect life. He never was mean. He never was impatient. He never disobeyed. He always obeyed his father. And then Jesus died for our sins and he rose from the dead. And now he is alive in heaven. So let's right now practice our memory verse. It's the same verse from last week. And it's right from the Bible. Here's my big Bible. It's right from Acts chapter 9, verse 20. Okay, Acts chapter 9, verse 20. Who is Jesus? Well, this is what our verse says. It says, Jesus is the Son of God. Acts 9, 20. You try it. 
Jesus is the Son of God. Good job. Now you say it all on your own. So good. That's our memory verse. So maybe you can practice it again. Maybe you can tell it to your moms and your dads. Practice your verse this week. Okay? Let's sing a song. We haven't sung a song yet. Today is a special day. Every day is a special day. It's a special day that God made. And we can praise him and be so happy because he gives us life and he makes, gives us a new day every day. So we're going to sing a song that goes like this. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Do you like that song? I hope you do. Let's sing it again. And this time I want you to repeat after me. So I'll stay apart and I'll go like this. And then when I point to you, I want you to sing it. Okay, so it'll go like this. This is the day. Now it's your turn. This is the day. Good job. That the Lord has made. Your turn. That the Lord has made. Good job. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good job. Now we'll sing this part all together. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, your turn. This is the day that the Lord has made. All right, the last thing we're going to do today, guess what? We're going to practice all of our catechism questions so far. There are seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if you don't know them all, that is okay. Maybe you're just starting to learn them, and we're so glad that you are. But let's just see if we can say them together. I'll ask a question. You try to answer it. I'm going to listen. And then I'll tell you the answer, and you can see if you are correct or incorrect. Okay, are you ready? Here's the first one. The first question. Who made you? God. So the answer to that question is God. Who made you? God. Good job. That was the first question. Now let's do the second question. Second question. What else did God make? God made all things. Third question. Why did God make you and all things? For his own glory. You're doing such a good job. That was our first, second, third. Now let's do our fourth question. Here we go. How can you glorify God? By loving him and doing what he commands. That's right. That's how we glorify God. By loving him, by saying, I love you, God. Thank you, God and by doing what he commands, by obeying his commandments, which sometimes means obeying what our parents say to do. Good job. All right, fifth question, here we go. Why are you to glorify God? Because he made me and takes care of me. So why are we to glorify God? Because he made me and takes care of me. Good job. Okay, so we did one, two, three, four, five. We have two more. Here we go. Number six. Is there more than one true God? No. There is only one true God. Good job. You can say that with me. No, there is only one true God. Okay. Are you ready for the seventh question? Okay, here it comes. The seventh question is, in how many persons does this one God exist? Do you remember? 
In how many persons does this one God exist? In three persons. And you can remember it because it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There, God the Holy Spirit. There are three persons. Wow. You did such an excellent job. I loved my time with you. I hope you have a great week. Don't forget to stay warm out there. And I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye, friends.